Okay. Hello, my name is Nicole Mashburn, and today I'm going to talk to you about birth control methods. Here's a list of the different types of birth control methods. I'm going to list this, talk about this list, and then I'm going to go through individually and talk about the different types of these types of birth control uh, methods. The first one is abstinence. We have some natural methods. We have hormonal methods. There's one called the emergency contraception or Plan B. We have barrier methods. IUDs are also known as intrauterine devices and permanent sterilization. Now before I talk about the individual types and how they work, let's talk about effectiveness. How well do they work? This is a neat uh, graphic I got from the World Health Organization and USAID. And basically, this arrow is going from least effective to most effective. And I'm going to talk about most of these different types of birth control. The least effective are spermicides and withdrawal. The most uh, effective are sterilization techniques and implantable, um, implantable devices. So we're going to talk about each one of these and their effectiveness rates and let you decide for yourself, if you decide to use birth control, what kind may be best for you. The first kind is abstinence. It is the only 100% true method of birth control. Okay, It's probably the least realistic, but it's the most effective. So it's the most effective. If you don't have sex, you can't get pregnant. All right. So an abstinence with both partners when you don't engage in sexual intercourse. You guys hopefully know that by now. And obviously you've got to have communication. Both partners have to agree that this is what they're going to do. Again, very effective sometimes not very realistic. So what do we do when we know we want to have sex? All right, well, we've got some natural methods. If you're not into taking medicines or anything like that, there are some things called natural methods. The first one is withdrawal and then the rhythm method. Now, withdrawal, basically, you remove the penis from, <clears throat> from the vagina before ejaculation occurs. This is not the most efficient method of birth control. Its effective, effectiveness is about 80%. So it's pretty unpredictable, especially in teens. You know, you're getting in the hot, uh, heat of the moment, passion. Um, doesn't always work. One out of five women will become pregnant when they depend on the male to withdraw during intercourse. So not the most effective way to go. The rhythm method. Again, not the most effective way. What happens in the rhythm, rhythm method is a woman will track her menstrual cycle, okay, and you should know if you've learned about the menstrual cycle so far, there's a t time during your menstrual cycle when you ovulate, and you can basically take your temperature, count the days, and over a couple of months, you're supposed to be able to figure out when you're most fertile, that few days before and after ovulation. So during that most fertile time, you abstain from sex or use a barrier method, okay? If you, in a perfect world where you knew exactly when you were ovulating, it's 95, 91% effective. Typically, about 75. So that means one out of four times, it's not going to work. There's an old joke, what do you call uh, couples who use the rhythm method? Parents. All right, so it's not 100% guaranteed to work. The other problem with that, one of the reasons why, is women have irregular periods. You may be on a 28-day cycle, but you may not necessarily ovulate every 14 days. It may be 12, it may be 16. So, you, you know, you miss it by a couple of days, you wind up being pregnant. So the rhythm method, not real effective. So we're going to move on to some more effective methods, and these are hormonal. When we talk about hormonal birth control methods, we're talking about oral contraceptives, birth control pills. We call it the pill. The ortho-evra patch the Nuva Ring, Depo Provera, which is an injectable, and Norplant, which is an implant. We're going to talk about all of these and, and how they work. Now, when you talk about hormonal methods, they all pretty much work in the same way, a little bit of variation, but generally the same way. They basically contain, contain a mixture of estrogens and progesterones. And what that does, if you go back to your studying of endocrine system, it's going to stop the ovulation, stop the, the uh, release of the, the maturation, release of the egg, by inhibiting FSH and LH. They also thin the uterine lining so it's not ready uh, to uh, have uh, implantation of, the, uh, of a um, fertilized egg. So if the uterine lining's thin, there's no way for the, uh, if, if um, fertilization did occur, it wouldn't. It wouldn't implant inside the uterus. 
It thickens the cervical mucus. By doing that, that's a barrier the sperm can't get through. These are usually 99% effective when used correctly. Okay, so you've got to remember to take the pill every day or have your implant done regularly or whatever. So when you use them correctly, as they're prescribed, they're very, very effective. What they don't do is protect you from sexually transmitted diseases. Okay, so if you're in risky behavior, uh, this is not going to protect you from things like syphilis, gonorrhea, HIV, uh, any kind of sexually transmitted disease. Now, this is a general list of uh, benefits and then side effects and risks. These pretty much go with just about any of the hormonal methods. Some are a little, little less than others, but generally these are your benefits and your side effects. Benefits, prevents pregnancy. Typically will ease your menstrual cramp because that, that um, uterine lining doesn't get as thick. There's not as much to slough off during the monthly period, so cramps tend to be better. Periods tend to be shorter in length. They tend to be more regular. It will tend to decrease the chance of an ovarian cyst. And this should say ovarian cancer, not ovarian cyst. It also increases the incidence of ovarian cancer and acne. So ovarian cyst and then change that to cancer. Sorry about that. Side effects or risks. Sometimes your breast will become uh, tender. You may have nausea, headaches, moodiness, weight changes, a lot of, lot of uh, um, side effects are similar to pregnancy, okay? You may have some spotting, some irregular periods. It does tend to increase your stroke risk. So if you take birth control pills or any kind of hormonal uh, birth control, you don't want to smoke. It will increase your um, risk for stroke. And it may, there's some, the, the jury's still out on this, it may increase breast and cervical cancer. So it does well, it decreases ovarian cancer, but it may increase cervical and breast cancer. And like I said, you need to look at your family history and see if that makes you a candidate uh, for increased breast and cervical cancer. Now, because of these side effects, this is where usually people will give up on the pill. They'll take a pill and they, they gained weight or they were in a bad mood or they had a headache and they just tossed the whole idea. There's a lot of different types of birth control. So sometimes it takes you using three or four or five different times or different types to figure out what actually works the best for you. So speaking of that, I'm going to talk about some different types of those hormonal, uh, uh, hormonal uh, methods. The first one is the pills. And pills come in basically two main types. There's the 28-day cycle type, and there are extended cycle or continuous types. When you talk about the 28-day type, now your instructor probably won't, won't want you to memorize all this. This is just kind of an FYI, let you know how, how these things come packaged and what they're actually doing. Sometimes they're called monophasic, biphasic, and triphasic. Monophasic basically means you have uh, 21 pills, that all have the same amount of hormone. It's exactly the same amount. You take it for 21 days. Then you take seven days of a placebo. Seven days of a placebo, which is basically a sugar pill, and you have your period. Some examples of that are Aless, Demulin, Loestrin, Orthocyclin, and Yasmin. If it's biphasic, that means that 21 days has two different levels. It changes about mid-month. You have two different levels. And some of those brand names are uh, Genest, Merced, Nissan, and Orthonovum. Triphasics, basically every week, you have a different uh, combination of hormones. So you'll have your, your uh, little container. We'll basically have three um, colored pills. You'll take this color one week, and then this color, and this color. And that's a different dose of the hormones. And then you'll take another last week of nothing, a placebo, and have your period. Uh, orthonovum, orthotricycline, trinoral, and triphasal are very common triphasics. These tend to work really well uh, if you have acne. Um, if, you're, if you're having problems with acne, a lot of times they will put you on orthotricycline. Uh, these tend to feel a little more natural because the hormones kind of change throughout the month, so a lot of people don't experience some of the moodiness and things with um, orthotricycline. So if you've tried these and you just hated it, you might want to try these, vice versa. If these triphasics didn't work for you, you might want to try monophasic. Now, some you take for a long time. We have extended cycle and continuous. Uh, seasonal and seasonique are examples of extended cycle. You basically take them for uh, about three months, 81 to 84 days, okay? 
and then you stop for a week and you have your period. So you have a period about every four months, every three to four months, depending on which one you're taking. Libral, you take 365 days a year, so you completely eliminate a period. And there's no health risk to doing that. It's, it's, it is safe and effective. It's just whatever feels right for you and what works best for you. Now, you can also do a patch. Orthoevra is the patch. And basically, you've got those same hormones in a patch, a transdermal patch. And you can put it anywhere on the body, usually the arm or the abdomen or the, uh, the hip. It's thin, flexible, beige. You don't, don't really see it. And you change it every week. You put it on, and every week you change it. So you've got to remember, you've got to remember to change it weekly. If you don't do that, then it's not effective. So you've got to make sure that every week, the same time on Sunday or whatever day of the week you're changing, you change that patch. Okay? So you wear it for three weeks, change it every week. The fourth week, you don't wear it, you have your period. Um, the most common thing that you hear is it may leave a little skin irritation. So some people will actually move it every week so you don't get that irritation. NuvaRing. This is a, a new form of birth control. It's a flexible contraceptive. It's a, uh, basically a little, looks like plastic, and it's infused with these hormones. And it goes inside the vagina, up inside near the cervix, and you leave it there for three weeks. And so as it's in there, these hormones come out of the ring and basically are absorbed into your bloodstream through the vagina. Leave it in there for three weeks, take it out during week four, and you'll have your period. Um, that's even more uh, reliable because you only have to remember once a month to do something. So instead of taking a pill every day or changing your patch every week, you only got to do something once a month. So fairly, really effective. Depo, uh, Depo Provera, it lasts for a long time. It's basically a shot or an injection. And you give this shot every three months and it prevents pregnancy. It's 99.7% effective. It's a very effective way of birth control. It's really cool. You don't got to remember to take a pill. You don't have to remember to change your patch. You don't have to put a ring in. Just every three months, you've got to go get a shot. It also will stop your menstrual cycles. Most people will uh, be irregular for this first three to six months, and then they kind of get regulated and no periods whatsoever. So that's a bonus. And last but not least on the hormonal types, we have implants. And these will last years, even more uh, easy on you as far as remembering what you have to do. These are considered long term. So, you know, if you're 21, 22 years old and you're about to get married and you're thinking you want to have a kid in the next year or two, this is not your thing. This is somebody who is, you know, busy right now. They've got four, five, six years where they don't want to have children. It's a great option. What they do is they take an implant, it's a little rod, and I've got a picture, and they basically place it under the skin. It takes about 15 minutes in a physician's office. And these are 99.95% effective, and they last anywhere from three to five years. So that's even easier. But again, if you're looking to have a child the next you know, one to two years, this is not for you. This is something that you've already had your children, or you know you're going to college, or you're, you know, you've got, you're doing something that's going to prevent you, or you don't want to have children for three to five years. This is actually a good way to go. So this is basically a little diagram. Just basically they make a little incision and they just slide these little um, rods, these little Norplant capsules up under the skin and they will say, uh, depending on which type you use, there's a three year and a five year. And they can take them out at any time and once they take them out, your fertility will return. Um, and you can actually feel them, but they're, they're not that bad. I mean, you, you, can, you can see them under the skin and uh, it's, um, but they're not, they don't bother you anything. Okay, there's also something called emergency contraception. You've probably heard it called Plan B. Now, this is not the same thing as RU486, the abortion pill. Okay, this is different. This is not the abortion pill. Plan B is basically a mega dose of hormones that you take 72 hours uh, after unprotected sex. Or if your contraception fails, you forgot to take your birth control pills, you forgot to put your Nuva ring in, you forgot to change your patch. For whatever reason, you've forgotten or, you know, you slipped up and so you realize you've had unprotected sex. If within 72 hours you take Plan B, it's basically a mega dose of hormones, it will basically stop ovulation. Okay? If you've already ovulated, you know, it's too late. You, you, nothing, you, know, you really can't stop it. But if you haven't ovulated yet, this will actually prevent you from ovulating. 
and it's 75% to 84% effective. Again, if you've already ovulated, then conception may have already occurred, all right? It can also alter the environment of the uterus, making it inhospitable. The sperm uh, make it uh, disruptive for the egg and the sperm to get together, thicken the mucus, things like that. Basically, it's just two pills. You take 12 hours apart within 72 hours of unprotected uh, sex. You have to have a prescription. can't go down to the pharmacy. You've got to have a prescription to do that. But it just basically stops you from ovulating. Now, all those are your hormonal methods. Uh, these are things that you have to remember to do either daily or weekly or monthly or yearly. But you have to, uh, to do that. Now, barrier methods, they work basically at the time of intercourse. Okay, and what they do is they block the egg and sperm from meeting. So these are taken, or you do these during intercourse or right before intercourse just to stop the egg and sperm from getting together. Many of these barrier methods are, uh, do play a role, these two especially, actually the only two. These play a role in preventing sexually transmitted diseases. So um, if you're not worried about getting pregnant, but you're more worried about sexually transmitted diseases, you want to look toward these barrier methods. They do have a high failure rate because you've got to remember to do it, you know, take, take a condom or whatever during or right before intercourse. These are some examples of these barrier methods. Spermicides, the male and female condom, the diaphragm, and the cervical cap. All they're doing is preventing the egg and the sperm from coming together. Uh, spermicides, basically that's going to kill the sperm inside the vagina. So there's uh, jellies. There's foams, all kind of things. Some work uh, instantly. Uh, you can do, you know, right before intercourse or right after intercourse. Some require a couple of, you know, 30 minutes to an hour before intercourse to insert. They're about 76% effective. So, you know, not great, but better than nothing. They work really well if you combine them with another method, like a condom. So you put condoms and spermicides together, much better effective rate. So then, got your male and female condoms. These are really common. This is the most common and effective barrier method. Uh, when you use it properly, okay, when you use it every time, when it doesn't break, it prevents pregnancy and it prevents uh, sexually transmitted, that probably should be a D, sexually transmitted diseases, including HIV. So syphilis, gonorrhea, HIV, any of your sexually transmitted diseases can be prevented by using a condom. In a perfect world, using it every time, it never breaks, 97%. Typically, 88%. If you add a condom and spermicide together, 99, so very effective. The female condom is an, al is an alternative form, and so instead of the male wearing it, the female, it goes up inside the vagina. It's not real pretty, it's, um, it's kind of cumbersome, actually. It goes up inside the vagina, uh, again, it can prevent sexually transmitted diseases, including HIV. In a perfect world, using it every time and it doesn't break, 95%, typically 79%. Um, you probably could add a spermicide to that and increase your effectiveness, and I guess if you used a condom, male and female condom at the same time, you'd be very protected. Okay, diaphragm and cervical cap. They're very similar. They work real, in real similar ways. Uh, basically, you need to go to a physician and they fit you for this. And these are basically uh, little cups almost, little latex cups. They go inside the vagina and they cover the cervix. So you have to put this in before intercourse. You have to remember to do that. Uh, typically, you add a spermicidal jelly, so that will kill the sperm. You need to put it in there, you know, in the vagina 18 hours to, uh, you know, 30 minutes, depending on what kind of spermicidal things you're using. And you can leave it for about 24 hours, then you have to remove it. Uh, effective, 94% in the perfect world, use it every time, use it with spermicidal jellies, 80% uh, if you don't use it right. Sometimes it doesn't fit quite right, it might leave a little gap, a little hole basically, and the sperm can swim right on up into the uterus, and there you go, you wind up pregnant. So not perfect, but with spermicidal jellies, it's better than nothing. So that's your diaphragm and cervical cap. What they don't do, they do not protect you against STDs. You can still get sexually transmitted diseases using a diaphragm. All right, the next kind of uh, birth control, these are reversible, 
and it's called an IUD, an intrauterine uh, device. And you may have heard of these, and you're like, oh, no, IUDs, IUDs. There was something back in the 80s and 90s called the Dalcon, or 70s maybe, the Dalcon Shield, and it caused some problems, perforated uterus and things like that. Well, they've improved a whole lot since then, and now they are very safe and very effective. Um, two common ones, there's the Copper Chi, called Paragard, and Marina. Copper Chi is basically a copper T, okay? And that, uh, it uh, goes up inside the vagina, up inside the vagina, and it'll last for about 12 years there's no, uh, no hormones, and that copper basically acts as a spermicide. So the copper is in there dissolving over all these years. It's not toxic to you or anything. It will kill the sperm. Um, tends to irritate the uterus, and so because of that, the, the, you can get uh, heavier periods and heavier cramping as a side effect. Not necessarily, but some people will see that. The other IUD that's real common is Marina, and it does have a hormone. So it's basically a plastic IUD, not copper, and it's infused with hormones, progestin and estrogen. It works just like the hormonal ones. It thickens the cervical mucus, it suppresses the endometrium, causes you not to ovulate, um, but people do tend to get some irregular spotting and bleeding. Um, it has a lot of non-contraceptive benefits. You don't have the breast tenderness, the nausea, the moodiness, the headaches, and things like that. So you kind of get all the plus side of hormones, the, the anti-ovulatory effects, without some of the extra side effects. All right, last but not least, permanent sterilization. These are surgical methods of birth control, and these are permanent, okay? There, there have been some successes with reversing some of these things, but when you make these decisions, you need to make them, you know, seriously because these are considered permanent. In the male, the vasectomy. In the female, the tubal ligation. Obviously, if you had a hysterectomy, that would do the same thing. No uterus, then obviously you can't get pregnant. But if you're not going for a severe, uh, severe surgery by having a hysterectomy, then a tubal ligation would do the trick. So vasectomy, basically what they do is they make a small incision, and they actually have some that even don't even make it an incision. I don't know how that works, but they do. You can cut, they go in, they make a small incision, and they cut the vas deferens, which is basically the pathway for the sperm to, to get out. So they cut the vas deferens, the sperm can't get out, and there's no sperm released. Now the male can still ejaculate, he still have orgasm. It doesn't affect that, there's just no sperm released. In uh, tubal ligation, they go in, they cut the fallopian tubes or the uterine tubes, they cut these, either cauterize them or tie them off. So now the egg is really still released, you still ovulate, but that egg goes in here and it doesn't go any further. It doesn't get to the uterus, can't be uh, fertilized. Um, these are very effective, except you've got to wait till the healing process is complete. Uh, it can take a while for this to actually be effective. So they, they make you come in, especially with vasectomy, um, a couple of weeks, months later to give a sperm count, make sure that there's actually no sperm there, that this was actually fully ligated or cut. Um, same thing with the uh, ovarian the tubal ligation. Sometimes these ends will uh, reconnect and the, and the ovum can still get out, or you may wind up with an ectopic pregnancy, but 99% of the time it's, it's a good way to go. You can see here the failure rate is 0.1% for vasectomy, uh, a little bit higher for the female, uh, so the vasectomy is more effective than the um, tubal ligation. For some people, they wind up with heavier periods afterwards. That's just a side effect that tends to happen with tubal ligations. Okay. I think that's all I've got for you today. I hope you learned something. Again, ask your instructor. A lot of this was a lot of information, more FYI, uh, just to let you know what your options are. Uh, you don't necessarily have to remember all those different types of particular brands of birth control. You've just been exposed to them. So if you have any questions, come find me, one of your instructors, and we'll be glad to talk to you. Thank you very much.